Hi everyone, I'm Natalie from My Progression and today we're going to talk about marking. This video will provide you with some tips and advice on getting marking right from day one in a new role or whilst working on supply. Feedback is so important to the pupils you're working with. Without feedback, how would they know if they're progressing and getting things right? They wouldn't. Whilst you're verbally feedback to the children in your class, marking is a constant and clear way to identify what they're getting right and what they're not. What your students learn from you or through you doesn't have to end when you leave for the day. Marking should allow the children to become reflective learners and gives them strategies to be able to improve their work and take the next steps in their learning. New schools bring about new ways of working and marking is one of the many skills that may have to be adapted to meet the needs of each individual school. We will go through some helpful tips later on in this training. Firstly, we'll look at the different types of marking. Deep marking, detailed written feedback to pupils offering guidance with a view to improving or enhancing their future performance. Pupils are then expected to respond in writing to the guidance, which in turn is verified by the teacher. Some teachers' unions are concerned about overuse of this type of marking, as it's extremely time consuming, and the evidence is inconclusive as to whether it's better than any other type of marking. Daily marking, marking to the learning objective. When teaching any subject, whether a core subject or a foundation subject, there's generally a learning objective, an outcome, an expectation of what knowledge and skills the learner should be able to exhibit after the teaching has occurred. So when marking a piece of work, it needs to be decided if the child can carry out the skills taught. Are we marking spelling or commenting on handwriting? Whatever it is, you need to mark to the objective. Well done, I can see you're confident in using fronted adverbials in your writing. Or, we will be looking at long division methods again. Make sure you know your division facts. Keep up the hard work. Self-marking. Self-marking definitely has its place in the classroom. It supports the teacher with workload, but more importantly, it allows the children to reflect on their own learning by identifying what went well and where improvements could be made. It's non-judgmental, non-threatening, and this can support self-confidence. You're trusting the children to take responsibility for their own marking. But beware, some will try to pull the wool over your eyes. So keep a watchful eye and make a mental note to check. This is a skill which needs to be taught as it supports higher level work in key stage three and above as the learner is trained in critically analyzing their work. Peer marking. This marking strategy is where children act as critical friends critiquing work in a positive and supportive way. It's a skill that has to be taught and modelled, but can have a huge impact on the children as they begin to identify the criteria for high quality work. Marking together to a set success criteria is essential, as some children will critique areas that don't need to be commented on, like, her writing's a bit big. See the description below for a link to an example of a success criteria form. Two stars and a wish. This is two positive comments and something to improve. This is a popular and great way of giving positive feedback when marking, as well as allowing you, the teacher, to promote an area that could be improved. This approach can also be applied to self-marking and peer marking. Marking changes considerably across the key stages. There will, however, be expectations or non-negotiables which set the standard for the year group. In EYFS, children are mainly given verbal feedback and stickers. The use of a sticker is a visual way to praise the work completed. A sticker on the child's uniform is often a great way to prompt a conversation at home with parents, which is always lovely because everyone loves a sticker, right? Always check your school's policy before using stickers. In Key Stage 1, standard practice will be verbal feedback along with a simple and easy to read comment. Make sure your writing is legible, printed, and that you note VF when you've delivered verbal feedback. As the children progress to Key Stage 2, we see more in-depth marking alongside self-marking and peer marking. 
Marking at Key Stage 3 and above can be very different to that of marking in the primary setting as teachers become specialists in their subjects and they teach a larger volume of pupils throughout the school. Each department will have a variety of strategies to monitor pupil progress, but these will always be backed up by regular formal assessments. Formal assessments will actively monitor the progress being made by each student and will give the teacher the ability to see how the whole class is performing. The assessment will usually take place at the end of a topic being taught or the end of a term. Some subjects, like maths, lend themselves to self-marking in the lesson, whilst others do not. I'm not sure how you'd self-mark a drama lesson. If the lesson doesn't allow for self or even peer marking, the teacher will often mark one completed piece of work in depth rather than marking all work, as this would be a mammoth task. If you're just starting a long-term contract, check in with the head of department regarding the marking policy. And if you're on short-term supply, ask what the expectations are for you in regards to marking. Now we have some tips to help you master this skill and get it right every time. Ask the school if their marking policy is available to have a look at. Go equipped with your own marking pens in a variety of colours. When teaching, flick back through the children's books to see if you can quickly define what's expected of marking and what strategies are used by the class teacher. Look out for, do they correct everything? Is a marking style obvious? Is there a comment on every piece of work? What colour pen is used? Do they self-mark or peer mark? Use your time effectively and if appropriate, ask the children to self-mark. This strategy allows for summative assessment of the children's understanding of the lesson, as well as allowing you, the teacher, to address any misconceptions. Use these opportunities to reteach and consolidate learning. Mark in the lesson, especially if working with a focus group giving verbal feedback too. Leave books open when children leave the class for their breaks, and then you can quickly mark the books and collect them in as you do so. This will also help you form a snapshot of how the children have coped with the lesson. If you're unsure of the school's specific marking policy, use your initiative and apply your own high standards to the marking of the work set. Even dating and signing it to make it obvious that you, the supply teacher, have marked the specific work. Leaving feedback for the class teacher concerning what you've achieved throughout the day is essential. I've marked all the maths books and I think the majority of the class had a good understanding of fractions. You can also inform the teacher of any books left unmarked. Have you got any more tips for other teachers? If so, pop them in the comments below and while you're there, like and subscribe to keep seeing more from my progression. What do you do when there's a lot of marking? Sometimes a great deal of work is set for example, some supply teachers are asked to supervise and deliver formal assessments. The marking scheme would need to be available, but in reality, it would be a challenge to mark a whole class's assessments for a number of subjects. Use common sense and perhaps try to complete one set, leaving a note for the teacher. Maths, spelling or SPAG is far easier to mark than reading a paper or a piece of writing. Leave a note saying you've done your best in the time constraints. What if marking isn't required? Some teachers would rather mark their own work. Win-win, enjoy, but always ensure to leave feedback for the teacher commenting on what you've observed during the day. If you're ever unsure of what's required of you when you go into a school, just ask. It's always better to ask the question than worry that you're doing something wrong. I've been Natalie from My Progression, and if you found this video on marking useful, then check out the rest of our channel for more videos on working in education. And let's keep your career in motion.